Hi, my name is Kiro, and I work for a game development studio called Team Intuition. And today, I'm going to show you how to make this effect. Before we begin, there are some things you should know. This tutorial uses the Unity 3D game engine, and you'll need version 2018.3, 2019.3, or newer. If you haven't already, I will walk you through starting a new project using the scriptable render pipeline and installing the visual effects graph. My intention is to keep this tutorial accessible to beginners. So let's get started. If you haven't already downloaded the Unity Hub, you can install it by going to this link, store.unity.com forward slash download dash n-u-o. Once on the page, click on the blue Start Here button, and be sure and read the conditions. There are certain cases you should be aware of. Unity Hub is a launcher for the projects you'll make in Unity. However, to get started, you'll need a license and you'll need to download a version of Unity into the Hub. To get a free Unity license, you can perform the following steps. To install the latest version of Unity directly from the Hub, you can click on the Installs tab, click the Add button, select the version of Unity that you want to download, and click on Next, and then click on Done. It may take some time to complete the download. Next, we'll create a project using the URP. A quick sidebar. The URP stands for Universal Render Pipeline and is Unity's way of allowing you greater scriptable control over graphics and visuals in your game. Rendering usually handles things like lighting, shadows, pixel colors, and is essential for seeing visuals on a screen. To create a project using the URP, go to the Projects tab, click on New, Click on Universal Render Pipeline. Name your project. Change the location if you want, and then click Create. Welcome to the Unity Engine. When you load up your HDRP or URP project, you'll be greeted with this demo screen. There is quite a bit here. So in order to constrain the length of this tutorial, I'll try to only tell you what is directly relevant or related. To use the VFX or Visual Effect Graph, we need to install it using the Package Manager. Note that if you chose HDRP instead of URP, the VFX Graph would already be included. Now to open the Package Manager, go to the Window menu on the top left and click on Package Manager. Once in the Package Manager, Ensure Packages says Unity Registry, and then we can search for the Visual Effect Graph, click here, and install. After installing, you may need to restart Unity. A quick walkthrough. Unity has modular windows, but by default you'll find the Hierarchy window on the left. The hierarchy is for listing the game objects in your scene. Whenever you click on a game object, information about it will appear in the Inspector on the right. The Inspector contains all sorts of useful information, from tweaking object settings to adding and removing components. Your project window is down below. Next to your console tab, you can click back and forth between them as needed. The project window contains files and assets added to your project, and the console contains print statements executed by your script, if you've added any. It will also display errors. Last but not least, we have your scene and game view. Now, the game view will be the view that the player sees, and you can manipulate this by positioning the camera object in the hierarchy.
The scene view represents the entire world currently, what is both in and beyond the player's line of sight, and you can use it to position elements in your 2D or 3D world. Next, to navigate the scene view, it is highly recommended you use a mouse. While hovering over the scene view, hold the right mouse button to turn your field of vision. You can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out, or hold down the mouse wheel to pan your view. Note, if you don't have a mouse, you can use this hand-shaped button in the top left, which will allow you to use this via left click. You can also reset your zoom level by focusing on an object and pressing the F key. To do this, simply click on an object in your hierarchy or scene view, hover over the scene view, and press the F key. Next, we'll cover how to create a game object. Everything in the hierarchy is a game object. A game object stores data and components for a particular object. To create a cube game object in the scene, for example, right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D objects and cube. Note that the cube was created both in the scene view and in the hierarchy. Remember, you can focus the scene camera on the cube by selecting it in the hierarchy, then hovering over the scene view and pressing the F key. Right now, this cube is sitting in space. It isn't doing much yet, but we can interact with it. After selecting it, we can move, rotate, and scale this cube using these three buttons on the top left. Move. Rotate. Scale. Control Z to undo. We can also perform these same operations with more precision using the transform component in the inspector. Each of these collapsible gray lines in the inspector represents a different component. But right now we'll just focus on transform. Using the values here, we can adjust the individual X, Y, and Z position, rotation, and scale. Right now, let's just make a long flat cube. We'll use this as our floor. Next, we'll create a visual effect atop that floor. Right click in the hierarchy, go to visual effects, and then visual effect. Note that if this option doesn't appear, you may have needed to restart Unity after installing the visual effect graph. This will create a game object with an empty visual effect component attached to it. The reason why it is empty is because it doesn't have a VFX asset attached. So, in order to create one, right click in your project window, go to create, and go to visual effects, and visual effects graph. Don't forget to name your effect. I think I'll name it Fire Mouse. Next, we can click on that visual effect game object in the hierarchy and drag and drop that Fire Mouse VFX asset into the slot. The first thing you might find is that your effect was created away from the floor. 
but that should be an easy thing to fix. Simply select the item and use the previous transform tool, which is this one, or the transform component to move it onto the floor. Before we proceed, now is a good time to learn how to save your scene in Unity to avoid losing it. To save your scene, simply go to File, and then Save, or Save As. Finally, we can get into the visual effect graph. Next, we'll cover how to create a game object. Everything in the hierarchy is a game object. A game object stores data and components for a particular object. To create a cube game object in the scene, for example, right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D objects and cube. Note that the cube was created both in the scene view and in the hierarchy. Remember, you can focus the scene camera on the cube by selecting it in the hierarchy, then hovering over the scene view and pressing the F key. Right now, this cube is sitting in space. It isn't doing much yet, but we can interact with it. After selecting it, we can move, rotate, and scale this cube using these three buttons on the top left. Move. Rotate. Scale. Control Z to undo. We can also perform these same operations with more precision using the transform component in the inspector. Each of these collapsible gray lines in the inspector represents a different component. But right now we'll just focus on transform. Using the values here, we can adjust the individual X, Y, and Z position, rotation, and scale. Right now, let's just make a long flat cube. We'll use this as our floor. Next, we'll create a visual effect atop that floor. Right click in the hierarchy, go to visual effects, and then visual effect. Note that if this option doesn't appear, you may have needed to restart Unity after installing the visual effect graph. This will create a game object with an empty visual effect component attached to it. The reason why it is empty is because it doesn't have a VFX asset attached. So, in order to create one, right click in your project window, go to create, then go to visual effects and visual effects graph. Don't forget to name your effect. I think I'll name it fire mouse. Next, we can click on that visual effect game object in the hierarchy and drag and drop that Fire Mouse VFX asset into the slot. The first thing you might find is that your effect was created away from the floor. But that should be an easy thing to fix. Simply select the item and use the previous transform tool, which is this one, or the transform component to move it onto the floor.
Before we proceed, now is a good time to learn how to save your scene in Unity to avoid losing it. To save your scene, simply go to File, and then Save or Save As. Finally, we can get into the visual effect graph. Now, in simple terms, the VFX graph is basically Unity's new particle system. A particle, also in simple terms, is usually a small 2D graphic effect used to add visual flair to an action or effect, at least within the field of game development. Particle physics, however, may use a different definition. Particles are used in many things. From shooting a spell, to weapon slashes, and even heavy landing. To improve our particles from these awkward 2D circles to something more distinctive, we can open a visual effect by double-clicking it in the project window. It will pop out this VFX editing window, which we can either leave popped out, or we can dock it by drag and dropping. I'll dock mine here, next to the inspector. This editor window allows us to change the setting of a particular set of visual effects from the image, speed, direction, color, velocity, lifetime, shape, and so much more. For example, this default system is spawning 16 particles per cycle in the spawn block. I can increase that value like this, 32, 100, or even 1000. But I have to ensure the maximum capacity in the initialized block is raised accordingly. Note the difference over here. Also, you'll note several blocks here. There are spawn, initialize, update, and output. The spawn block controls the spawn setting including timing and rate of spawning. The initialized block controls start values for when the particle is first spawned. The update block allows for changing values every time the particle updates, and the output block determines some of the final settings, such as which direction the particle should face, should it be billboarded, which means always facing the camera, you can change the particle image, and you can control whether the color should shift over the lifetime of the particle. Let's get started making this look like fire. Now, I'm not really one for build-up, so attached to this lecture, courtesy of Unity, you can find a link to a fire sprite sheet. Download and drag that into your project window to continue. Okay, so with your sprite sheet in your assets or project folder, you want to drag the texture onto the main texture slot of the output block. So drag this right here. The main texture is responsible for the default look of your particle. However, right now it's displaying the entire sprite sheet rather than a single flame or a quickly shifting animation, which is our goal here. To get it to display just a single flame, let's go over here and set the UV mode to Flipbook or Flipbook Blend. And let's set the Flipbook size to match the number of rows in the image. I count in the actual texture itself, eight on the x-axis and four on the y-axis. So let's go eight and four. Now it displays individual fire sprites, one per particle, better. However, we still have to fix two things, the dark background and the lack of animation. To fix the dark background, we need to change the blending mode from alpha to additive, from alpha to additive, which basically suggests that instead of blending the particle according to its transparency value, we draw the visible colors atop other colors in the scene additively. These will remove the background. Excellent. 
Next, with these settings established to play the full animation, we need to add a flipbook player to the update block. Remember the update block. Now press the space bar and type in flipbook, enter, and it will add that, and voila. Although we're not quite done. We can play around with the specific settings for controlling timing and speed, but in general, eight on the x-axis times four on the y-axis is 32, which means setting this number to 32, we'll play the entire animation at least once before the particle vanishes, though we may want a slower flame. As the artist here, that's up to your discretion. Play around with it. Figure out what looks best for your goal. I think I'll go with 16 for now. Next, we'll refine the effect. Fire's main particle usually stays in the same zone, rather than floating upwards. So let's tweak some settings to enhance its verisimilitude, its similarity to the real thing. To tweak this, let's just go here and set the y-axis to zero. The set velocity random node basically allows you to add a random amount of velocity between two values or vectors to the particle when you first spawn it. Do you see how each flame goes out in a random direction? That's because it's drawing from this range of numbers to this range of numbers. And it generates a random value in between per particle. Next, what we'd like to do is get the flame to drop in world space rather than local. Right now, it's in local space, which means the particles move along with the game object. World space would mean that when the particles drop, they're actually left behind or in the wake of the game object. To change its effect to world space, let's go to the initialize block over here and toggle world. Click over here, press the space bar, set position, down, pick this one. And then from here, we need a few other things. First off, we need a vector three which will produce a zero, zero, zero vector. And then we want to change the space from local to world. Right now, this L right here denotes that this vector, the zero vector is in local space. So when we change it to world space using this node and output it, it will determine where the fire is. And so now, magically, oops, wrong item. It will leave fire in its wake as we move it. 